Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of death. Hey folks, how y'all doing? I know it's been a little a little minute. I like to upload at least one video a week, but uh, last week I had to make a mad dash back to my hometown in New York. So I didn't really have a chance to upload um, this week. I'm gonna see if I can get at least two of them out because there's just a few things. I don't know if everything is gonna fit into this one video. Um, this trip was a little different. It was nostalgic even. Um, so in this video, we're, it, it'll take some turns <laughs> and some twists, but stay with me as I walk you through because um, I think that it really had gave me an opportunity to just revisit some concepts and some places into my life and just to kind of you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been so stay tuned and <laughs> this is Haitian holistic helping you get the love health and wealth that you want Well, where do we begin? Did you know that I was a Harvard graduate? <laughs> yes, I attended and graduated from John Harvard Elementary School, okay? And, you know, I was walking past it, you know, this, this past week. And I realized, like, my god you know when you think these children are not watching what you're doing at home think again because my first pendulum reading <laughs> was by a third grader my classmate i'm not gonna say her name <laughs> she gave me my first pendulum reading and in that building as well i think it was in the same conversation where i learned what a psychic a whore and a virgin was all in one conversation and this was like amongst maybe fifth graders or something like that and that all happened in that harvard building <laughs> now right across the street from <laughs> ps34 was saint jokinum and uh i attended the school there I was attended the church and the school there uh, when I was preparing to receive my second second sacrament second of the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church um, preparing for my Holy Communion and so the prayer that you heard earlier um, is said during the rosary and you have to recite these prayers. Um, you say it frequently when you attend church, okay? And ironically, it's the Apostle Creed first, then um, Our Father and then you have hail mary glory be etc etc as you go around the rosary but um we'll get to that later on okay now i can recall you know going to service even when you're going to service like you'll see the figure of mary but mary always seem like the silent partner to me you you never really heard of much of what she did other than have christ <laughs> that is the only real accomplishment that was ever told about mary
you know, I'll be the first to say that I am in the process of deprogramming myself and um, reprogramming, retraining myself um, to be, do, and think how I want to live my life on my terms, not according to what anyone else says or what anybody else thinks. You know, it's my life and I will do what I choose to do with it. But I also realized that no one can do it for you. It is a work that you have to do uh, in, of, and for yourself. Gasso, gasso, se puse en la vimia. Gasso, gasso, se puse en la vimia. Sent Marie Madeleine, ma mando gasso. Jésus Marie Joseph maman do grâce 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 c'est pour ça en la vie mio So I do my best to post um feast days on Instagram it's kind of like a, a reminder for myself and whomever else and I posted uh an image of Mary Magdalene on the 22nd and I realized that Mary Magdalene is not there is no real image for Mary Magdalene at least not something that um, that people can recognize if it's an image that people do recognize they have a tendency to you know to respond but when it's something that is not common or popular it's kind of like taboo and you know undesirable even you know so it's kind of especially in uh it's interesting to me because as in the uh the Puya Guinea that I mentioned last time the chant and the songs and even a meditation that is done before you know going into the actual service or dance itself or feast itself um mary magdalene is one of the first that is mentioned during the prayer yet it seems like there's no real connection or that anybody really knows anything uh about her you know so I found that kind I found that interesting. So who is this Mary Magdalene? What does she represent and what role did she play? Um, the Catholic Church had such an influence on Haitians that you'll many Haitians first for the women at least, their first name will start with Mary. And for men their first name will start with Jean, which is really the Jean, but John, right? Because of the heavy influence and imposition that, you know, the, the church made on the nation itself. Okay. So Mary Magdalene, Mary is a first name, a common first name, especially among Haitians. Um, but Magdalene, itself is a title okay and it is a title for a mistress and a priestess because remember um, Google defines a mistress as a woman in her authority but also we know what is commonly known as the other woman now they say that uh, Mary Magdalene, you know, walked with Jesus. But if she's a mistress, then how is that so? How is she the mistress unless Jesus had a wife? And if Jesus had a wife, then who was his wife? But that's not, you know, where I'm going with that because that still is in the realm of all of these illusions and questions that you know we really do not have 
uh, answer to, to especially these biblical characters, okay? Um, if Mary Magdalene was a priestess, then perhaps she was a, uh, a priestess in a temple, like the temple of Dendera, where that was the temple for Hathar. Um, Hathar is depicted as you can as a bull god goddess, okay, and you can see images of this bull with a sistrum around its neck, and the sistrum is also the sacred rattle. Um, Hathar, Isis, Newt, even are all feminine counterparts to uh, masculine gods. Um, as we know, the church plagiarized many of these myths. One of the myths that they plagiarized was um, that of Isis and Osiris, Asar and Aset. Um, these Egyptian figures who had now have been given other names, um, but the story somewhat stays the same. Um, we go from that to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. So Mary Magdalene, if Jesus was a master, then that means that Magdalene was a mistress okay that means that um, she too came and did the work that she was supposed to do however they have given her many um, names one of them is the sacred prostitute But in other uh, stories you will hear is that she was considered the 13th apostle. Um, she also was the one to first witness Jesus at the resurrection. Um, and she may have been the woman who was healed of the seven demons. Okay. But... They tried to preserve this story so much so that um, Jesus was just <laughs> so pure and, 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 and divine that he could not, you know, have or be involved in these intimate uh, relationships or that he could have a counterpart even, especially that of a woman. A woman who is equal to him. Okay. Set my madeleine, puye, la puye, pousse, yo, dava la wedo, soulage, enfant, yo. Set my madeleine, puye, la puye, pousse, yo, dava la wedo, soulage, enfant, yo. Set my madeleine, maman, m'aime, oui. Jésus, Marie, Joseph, maman, m'aime, dava la wedo, nous souffrons assez. In the first book and the first chapter in the Bible, God was created in man's image, in the image of a man. God was not created in the image of a woman. And so she did not have much to identify with. She did not see herself as God. Man was seen as supreme, the supreme high being. And women are viewed as weak, inferior, and 
essentially evil. In Genesis, uh, women were blamed for the fall of men, um, mankind even, cursed with menstruation and blamed for bringing pain onto themselves and having to bear children and give birth, etc., etc. Okay? God was created in the image of man and not of the woman. So to even claim a woman as God is almost blasphemous. Rage has been bottled up in the bodies of women all over the world from suppression and oppression. Um, from the denial of knowing who they are and what their potential is. I mean, even in the Bible itself, um, Paul goes off and um, says that women should be silent. But I'm going to just put up the two scriptures that speaks about a, a woman's place, I guess, in society. Not only in the church, but in society itself, okay? their consciousness buried and their voice silence at this point at this in this day and time it's really no secret that the catholic church um took or that the church itself you know took what they wanted from cultures and ancient civilizations and left the rest out buried the others okay uh, and part of the feminine consciousness was a part of that, especially if you're denied seeing an image of yourself. In voodoo, if a voodoo as in somebody who practices, here's the word met metres, um, two images will come to mind, okay? Both having the same name, <laughs> starting with the same name, but ultimately two different aspects of the feminine, okay? Now, uh, both referred to as metres, you have metres, and both addressed as Ezili, is that, at that, Ezili, Frida, and the other one, Dato. Now, image, we all know, is worth a, a thousand words, and these two are supposed to be arch enemies, uh, nemesis, if you would like to call it that. Uh, but I have a, a different viewpoint on these aspects, okay? And we'll, we'll talk about that a little. Ironically, um, there are two different images, right? And the one that would be considered white is preserved, okay? Untainted, untarnished, okay? In immaculate condition, if you will. But the black image or the one that would be considered the, the black Madonna um, is the one that has the two scratches on her on her face okay now the legend or the myth goes that um it was Frida and Dotto that were fighting and Frida is the one that cut that cut her <laughs> that cut her and scratched her cut her tongue out and that scratched her but I beg to differ, okay? Let's make no no doubt, there is no doubt about it, that Frida is a priestess and that when she comes into possession, really um, 
she knows the nature of women. Okay. To her, she already knows that. Um, however, she, when before you approach her, she wants to know, have you been purified? Have you been cleansed are you of a pure heart so you'll see her come into possession and her finger her pinkies go up in order to protect her heart okay and to <laughs> really get a sense of is this person of a purified nature Dantha, on the other hand, is said to be the magician, um, the magic that is associated with black women is their ability to create something out of nothing, their ability to um, endure pain struggle and strife yet she is the mother of all the container of melanin all life has sprung from her um, betrayed time and time again she had to learn to defend herself so she exudes that courage okay her core being filled with a rage she's referred to she has so there's so many references made to that uh, it could be a rouge map young bad young um all of these fierce aspects of the feminine okay uh that uh, the image that is used to represent um, Fuida sometimes is uh, the lady of seven sorrows. Now this is all from, and this is my interpretation, that this is from these emotions or these, these manifestations when they come through and possessions are from centuries of grief. From what women had to go through the names that were given onto them yet their true nature not being acknowledged and not being able to uh, express themselves you can say it's Methodist, a magician, a mother, the matriarch that is filled with rage and rancor, okay? So these, this is acted out, um, acts of the feminine in distress. Cette Marie Madeleine priait pour les enfants. Yo attention, gagne bon Dieu. Cette Marie Madeleine priait pour les enfants. Yo attention, gagne bon Dieu. Attention, gagne bon Dieu. Attention, gagne bon Dieu là. Cette Marie Madeleine priait pour les enfants. Yo attention, gagne bon Dieu.